for today. My dad and I are gonna be building the barn doors for his guest bedroom and we have all of our materials, we're all set up, we're ready to go. I'm just waiting for my dad to get here. He should be here any minute. We're gonna get started. I'm not, I'm trying not to jinx us and say that this is gonna be probably the easiest DIY barn door build ever, but we're gonna see how it goes. So far our thoughts of what we have planned I think is gonna be super easy. Let me show you guys the materials that we have and kind of what we're thinking, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let's do it. Okay, so here's what we have. We actually have four sheets of MDF. Um, this is half inch MDF, and we're gonna be using one as the backer, so like one whole solid piece for the backing, and then we're gonna cut up another piece to make all of our trim pieces to get the design on the front that we want. So I think it's gonna be pretty easy. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lay out with tape everything that, um, how thick we want our edges to be and our insides and everything so we can kind of get uh, design down and the width and everything that we want of our trim pieces to be so that way it kind of looks like, you know, I don't know, cohesive is maybe the, one, the word I want to use because our doors are 41 inches wide, like they're super big. <laughs> um, they're gonna be 41 by 81 and a quarter, I think is what we ended up with. Um, so they're gonna be, gonna be pretty darn big. So we chose to go with MDF for these because the MDF is not going to warp. Um, so you, of course, you get something going like this with wood and over time, I mean, there's definitely a, a pretty good possibility that it could warp and twist a little bit. So we did not want to have to deal with that, especially because the doors are going to be, um, they're going to be able to do like this. Um, so they're not going to be side to side. They are going to, there's going to be one in the back that's always in the back. And then this one in the front that can slide and they'll slide together. So. Um, you know, it's a little bit of a different design and so with that we were like we do not want them to warp because then over time They're not going to um, you know slide correctly So we're really hopeful that the MDF is going to be you know the way to go So I'm gonna get this taped out and I'll show you guys what we end up with so let's do it My dad and I began this project by running our boards down the table saw into six inch strips We decided on six inch strips all the way around the door and in the center of the door and then the cross bucks on the door are five inches. We then began cutting everything down to size. We used wood glue and brad nails to secure all the trim to the doors. Next, we found our center and began working on figuring out the angles for the cross pieces. This part can be a little bit tricky, but if you take the time to get those angles right, you're gonna be so much happier with the result in the end. Because our doors were going to be super thin, we decided to add an extra trim piece on either side of the door to help fill that gap that the hardware would naturally create. This trick also helped us to save weight on the door. Next, I began by filling all the holes with some spackle. I love using spackle. I think it's a, a little bit stronger. Also, it is just super smooth when you sand it down. I did go ahead and fill the sides and sand those down as well, just because I wanted to make sure that all those gaps were completely erased. Next up is my absolute favorite part. As many of you know, I love painting, so I'm starting by priming the door with my favorite Ultra Grip Primer by Dunn Edwards. Hey, good morning. Welcome back. I am so excited to get these painted today. As you guys saw last night, I got them primed, so that's what, that's what they're looking like at the moment. Aren't they so pretty? My plan today is that I'm going to flip them over, I'm gonna hand, I'm gonna roll the back of them, and then I'm going to flip them back over. I'm gonna spray the front. Let me show you guys what I'm gonna be using. We're gonna be um, using this, the Dunn Edwards Arista Shield line, and this is in a low sheen, which is the equivalent to their satin. Um, so I'm really excited. I've actually never used this sheen before. And we're gonna be using the shade Dark Engine, so um, it's, it's black. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, my dad and I um, were talking about colors and everything and and we both were like, black? Black? Yes? Yes? Black? Yes? <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna get these flipped over and then um, get to painting. So I'll take you guys along with me and show you guys how everything turns out. I'm so excited to get these hung up. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, I'm obsessing, obsessing over the color. I'm thinking right now, I'm a little nervous <laughs> um, because last night I had to, when priming the doors, I was going to spray the front of them, but uh, with my lights on in here and with the humidity and everything, like there was a billion bugs, like just little bugs, little gnats. Um, and so there was gonna be no way that I was gonna be able to spray in here with and have my ventilation because the bugs were so attracted to the light. So it just was not gonna work out for me last night. So I just chose to hand paint them, which I, I normally hand paint most everything. I just have not painted in these weather conditions. As of this very moment, I can see a little bit of my roller marks from the primer. I have just been the way that the primer had to dry, that it's not, it didn't dry the way that I'm normally used to because normally I never have this problem. Anyway, I'll keep you posted on, once I get my second coat done, how it's looking and we're gonna pray for the best because these painting conditions, they're not ideal. Things did not get better, unfortunately. I decided to go ahead and sand the doors in between my next coat, just give it a little light sand and see if that would help with things leveling out. Unfortunately, it didn't, so I tried another option to sand the primer before I put the first coat on, and unfortunately, I didn't like the way that that turned out either. What are we doing? What is this? <laughs> okay, we've engineered a plan. <laughs> Here is what we have going on. I'm gonna spray the doors. Because let me tell you what, folks. This, I know you can see on camera, I just lightly sanded this, so um, I know you can see, though, there is, this part I didn't sand because it's pretty smooth, but there are still roller marks, brush marks, like it's just super uneven. Okay, this, for example, I had to brush there, of course, because I had to um, get the insides of these by hand. Can't do that with a roller. So that was brushed, and then I rolled over it and it still left me with this. So I'm having major issues. I don't know what is going on with the paint. This is me. <laughs> Let me see if I focus, there I am. Um, you know, the thing is, that there's no good time to spray right now because it doesn't drop below 90 degrees at all. Um, whether it's at night, whether it's early in the morning, it is above 90 degrees no matter what. And so um, with painting, like that really 90 degrees is kind of your, you don't really wanna be painting above that temperature. So we're inside where it's a cool 75 degrees and I'm gonna try spraying these. The reason I haven't gone this route in the first place is because as you can see, it's a lot of work to get all this set up and figured out and- Inside the house. Inside the house with my white floors. That's what makes me nervous. I put a lot of work into these floors. <laughs> I don't wanna mess them up. So we're covered, we're good. We're gonna hope for the best. We're trying everything here and we're gonna figure it out. Every project brings new learning experiences. <laughs> so, you know, we've got the sprayer. Um, I've got this sprayer, I also have a handheld sprayer. This one is a Magnum X5. Um, Chewy Air Loose by Graco, and I really like it. When you want a really, really smooth finish, that's when we bust out this bad boy. So, let's do it. Unfortunately, I'm probably not gonna film this because um, I can't have my camera in here. I don't know what my paint situation is gonna be doing, but I will show you guys the after, and hopefully it's a lot better than my first coat. Fingers crossed. Here's our hardware for the barn doors. As you can see, they look a little different because our doors are gonna be bypass doors. We're gonna be mounting this to the top board here where you can see all the bolts. And the first thing that we needed to do was actually just cut down a couple inches off of our rail that we ordered. The manufacturer makes these at a certain length and so we knew we needed a custom length because our rail is gonna be going from wall to wall. My dad is super into metalworking, and so he's got about every tool you could ever need um, to accomplish a project like this and make it super custom. So here he is actually just giving the, the rail a nice little sand so that way it's got a nice finish on the end, but this step is totally optional. Is 
barn door install day and my dad and I are so excited to get our barn doors on the wall. We started by attaching our hardware and we soon discovered once we got the doors on the wall that unfortunately they were about a quarter inch too tall and they wouldn't slide. So this was a super easy fix. My dad and I decided to just go ahead and cut a half inch off the bottom of the doors. It was a super fast fix as you can see. Once we got the doors back on the wall, they slid perfectly and we are super happy with the way that they're turning out so far. Okay, so I have a quick minute that I'm gonna hop on here and talk to you guys about what my dad and I have going on with the barn doors. Um, so you guys may have saw from the footage um, last night that we got the doors up. They were just a little bit too long. <laughs> they were a little too tall. That was the best case scenario out of everything that could have gone wrong, in my opinion, because all we had to do was simply, um, you know, take a half inch off the doors. Um, really, we only need to take about a quarter inch off the door, so you know, that, that quarter inch, it will get you every time, I tell you what. So, that is what we did, and now, um, one of the things with the way that the doors hang, because they are, you know, like a bypass situation, the one that sits on the outside, the doors are kind of wanting to like lean in, which my dad and I had this conversation, like kind of mid-project, we had talked about, you know, I'm just... I'm just not really sure how those are gonna hang, if they're gonna hang correctly or not, and they they just didn't. So we kind of anticipated that that was gonna be the case. So it's no big deal. My dad and I got on Amazon last night, ordered some sliding barn door, the um, tracks, like the hardware um, for the bottom, the sliding rollers and stuff, and those should be here today. We're gonna see how those end up and if that's gonna fix our problem, but the thing is, working with my dad, it's like no problem is too big. <laughs> so whatever problem we run into, he always has a solution. So what I'm doing now is just doing a quick, real quick coat of paint on some extra pieces for the backside bottom of our doors because we're gonna go with the rollers. You guys probably saw and I explained earlier in the video that we, um, on the back of our doors, we didn't fill the tops and the bottoms. Like we just did two extra slats on the back. One to save weight, because these doors are big and they're heavy. So one reason was to save weight. The, the main reason that we did that because our doors would have only been one inch thick. So the gap between the doors and the gap between the wall and the doors was gonna be, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty large um, just because of the way the hardware is made. And that's, that was like standard for pretty much all the hardware that we looked at. So we chose to just add that extra piece on there as kind of like a, a faux thickness, if you will. Um, and I actually really like that because it really made the doors look like super chunky without adding a whole extra panel on there or a whole bunch of extra weight. The doors turned out super, super beautiful from spraying them. So that was definitely the way to go. I'm still like, I don't know. I'm still a little perplexed on the paint situation. I, I just still don't know. I'm thankful that I was able to spray them and that it worked out. I cannot wait to show you guys the finished, the finished result in there. So, and I've been wearing black paint for days, for days. <laughs> We're back. We're back with epic, amazing, awesomeness <laughs> we're just happy that it all turned out yes we're so happy so we i didn't film the last part for you guys and i think the last clip i was sharing with you guys some of the some of the thought process that we had to go through in order to achieve what we were wanting to do here our situation you know these doors are made to just basically stay and go they would stay like within this frame but we want to like this yeah just just like yes exactly so that's <laughs> this way. Yes. So like a standard closet, you know, you have your doors that just bypass each other. But we thought it would be super cool if the doors could go all the way to the left so that you could access the entire closet. That's the dream, right? That's the goal, is to have full access to your closet. Who doesn't want full who, access to your closet? Who doesn't want that, exactly. So because of that, 
We had to come up with a, a different situation for the sliders at the bottom. We'll show you what we came up with. What was happening is because these are on a single track, the barn doors wanted to kind of tilt in this way against each other and so they weren't sliding correctly. Um, we had a feeling that that might happen. Also, we didn't want to use the hardware because it was cheap. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And plastic. And we knew that probably one kick with our toe and it would snap off the floor. Yeah, they were really flimsy. They just wanted little tiny sliders to hold the doors out and open. Yeah. We didn't like that. Yeah. So we so, found these on the internet. Yeah, so we got these off of Amazon. And these are just your standard, what they're, they're made for is just to actually hook onto the baseboard. So that's what we've done here. And they've got little rollers. Let me focus here. They've got little rollers and the rollers allow the doors to slide really nicely. So we had to think of a way of where we wanted to put those so that way the doors could slide all the way across. So they slide super good. Those rollers work wonderfully and then you can get them all the way across. So, without them leaning against each other, without them um, touching each other, so that way you, know, you don't have any chips on the paint or anything, that's gonna keep them really, really nice. So we have one in the middle, one over there, we've got one here, and we have one here. So that way, wherever they go, they're supported the entire way. So what was our million dollar idea, Dad? We knew that we needed to have a stop on yeah, this door. here. Yep. And actually, my neighbor was over <laughs> and suggested that we yeah. put something here. And I found these little uh, oh, rubber stoppers. Well, they're rubber feet for like the bottom of a cutting board. Oh, okay. And so we butted two of them against each other mm -hmm. and they fit on that just right. Just perfect. Yeah. So we got to say thanks to Travis. Yes. <laughs> That was a great idea because I had other ideas that were going to work, but this was just so simple and turned out so good. Yeah, it works good. That way that door can stay there without like, because it, it wanted to keep rolling. So that way you can have it stop there so you're not messing with the doors. But also there is enough clearance here that if you want to pull this out, you can. So that way you can access the door on that side as well. The hardware here, it does not hit each other when they are fully closed. And then um, you have stoppers. The kit that we got came with these stoppers. And so the stoppers also, for those of you who aren't familiar with barn doors, um, the stoppers also keep the doors, you know, they stop at a certain, a certain point wherever you want them to, so yeah. We, we just had, it's the level gods are messing with us or whatever because our rail is perfectly level with a four foot level. Yeah. So are the doors and everything, but this hardware rolls exceptionally well. Yeah. And just the slightest touch, the barn doors will move. Yeah. I would say that overall, it was a success, Dad. Oh, this is a 15 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. We are super happy with the way that it turned out. I love the black. I love the board and batten. I love the way that they just, you know, the black and white, you can't go wrong. They complement each other so well. Yep. Everything turned out fantastic. Love it. With my little builder. Oh. She's just amazing. <laughs> super happy with them. I'm overly so happy. overly happy. Over the moon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's part of every single project that you get to that's like, Oh man, we gotta figure this out. It was we so just bounce fun. ideas off each other. Yeah. Figured out what we needed to do. Yeah. Found parts. Pretty much about anything that you can think of, you can find on the internet. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. We just need these little things with a couple of rollers. Yeah. Bam. There they are. Yeah. No problem. It's too big. So. Nope. Yeah. This was a ton of fun. I had it was so a lot much of fun, fun hanging out with yep. you, Dad. Me too. Oh, it was a good build. Again. Mm, I know. Again, right? Yeah. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, you guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing the project, seeing it in completion. We still have a little bit more to do in this room. We're gonna be doing some decor in here. We're gonna be doing some blinds. We're gonna be doing a new fan. Bam. So we have a little bit more to do in here, but this room is turning out so beautiful and I've just yep. had so much fun hanging out, so. Me too. Yeah. All right, well, thanks so much, guys. We always have more in store, so stay tuned, stick around, and I'll catch you really soon. Bye. Hi. <laughs> Hi.